both the binary uh, relay calculator and the hexadecimal relay calculator boil down to three primary concepts, and that is logic gates, latches, and delays. Okay, so you can see that I have my uh, breadboard here already populated with a, a bunch of components. Um, it looks like a whole lot because there's wires kind of going in, in all directions, but really it's just uh, some relays, which are these little black boxes here, uh, a couple of buttons for our inputs, uh, we have two diodes, uh, we have one capacitor, and then we have some resistors, and the resistors are really just voltage drop resistors so we don't burn out uh, LEDs, which I'll, I'll plug in so that we can see the result of, of what's going on. Now each of these relays are uh, SPDT, which are single pole dual throw relays. Um, what this means is that uh, you have essentially a common pin where you have a voltage or something coming in, um, and then you have a normally closed pin and a normally open pin. And what this means is that the common pin is connected to the normally closed pin when the relay coil is not energized. And then when the relay coil is energized, the switch inside the relay flips and the common pin is connected to the normally open pin. So that normally open pin closes when the relay is energized. And in this way we can, you know, send something from the common to the normally closed and then have an input come into the relay and that'll change to the normally open. So we can kind of create a switch. Um, and all of the relays used in both of my calculators are SPDT relays. Now there's a lot of different types of relays. There's dual pole, dual throw, uh, single pole, single throw. There's a bunch of different types. Uh, but the reason that I went with SPDTs are because they were just what I could get my hands on. And, and um, also there was a fantastic uh, resource on the internet that I found uh, of a gentleman that is building a relay computer. Uh, that is far, far more impressive than anything I've ever managed to do. Um, it's called the Merkia. I think I'm pronouncing that right. The Merkia Relay Computer, and he has a lot of really wonderful information, and he's building it entirely out of single pole dual throw relays as well. So that uh, information coupled uh, with the availability of the relays uh, really helped me get to where I needed to go. So the way that this breadboard is set up is that uh, for now we'll just look at these top uh, three rows here. And you can see that we have two inputs. We have uh, a button here and a button here. So these are our two inputs, our A input and our B input. Um, and then we have the relay set up for various outputs. Uh, and we'll go through these one by one. Um, so you can see that, first of all, these two inputs through these uh, orange wires here and these yellow wires here come down to the second row and the third row. So when I push this button here, it's energizing you know, this green line, this green line, and this green line. And then when I push this one, it's this line, this line, and this line. Um, and in that way, I can have you know, just two buttons supplying you know, two input A and input B for all three rows. Um, the first uh, the thing that these three rows are demonstrating are actually logic gates. And there are six uh, logic gates. There's, there's OR and NOR, there's exclusive OR and exclusive NOR, and then there's AND and NAND. Um, and actually all six of those logic gates are being shown uh, right here on these. So the first one, uh, we'll, you know, we'll go from easiest to most difficult. The first one is OR. And an OR gate actually doesn't require a relay. So you can see here that we have our two inputs uh, coming off of our five volts here, and then it goes through our inputs through these green lines to these two little diodes here. And then the diodes, the end of the diodes, are connected to each other through this little, little line right here. And then if I just take an LED and I connect it up to our output here, the way that an OR gate works is that if both of the inputs are off, our output is off. But if either input is on or both inputs are on, our output is on. So if I push one button, you can see our LED comes on. If I push the other button, the LED comes on. If I push both buttons, of course, the LED comes on because five volts is traveling through the diode and to the LED, no matter which diode it's going through. Now a NOR gate is essentially an OR gate with an inverter applied. So the way that the inverter works is that 
it's exactly the opposite of whatever the input is. So in this case, we have this relay set up as an inverter and the output of our OR gate goes into the coil of our relay. And then we have five volts coming into the common pin and we have our output coming out of the normally closed. So if the relay is not energized, five volts will go through the common to our normally closed and out our output. So if I plug a little LED into here, you can see the LED comes on. Now, if I push one of these buttons, you can see the LED goes off. So this LED is going to be exactly the opposite of this LED. So one button or the other button or both buttons and that goes off. So this is a NOR gate. Now, if we move uh, down a row, we have an AND gate and a NAND gate. So again, you can see that we have our two inputs coming in here. And the way that we can set up an AND gate with a relay is that instead of having, you know, five volts coming to the common pin, we just have the input from, you know, our, our A input going into the common and our B input going into the relay to energize the relay. And in this way, unless there's energy going into both of those pins, our output's going to be empty because our output is coming off of the normally open. So we have to energize the relay to switch the, the switch to the normally open, and we have to supply power into the common in order for our output to turn on. So if I supply a little LED into here, you can see that it's, it's off. Now, if I push one button, it doesn't turn on. If I push the other button, it doesn't turn on because an AND gate requires that both inputs have to be on to come on. So if I push both buttons, you can see the LED comes on. And then if I release, it goes off. Now a NAND gate, just like NOR and OR, a NAND gate is an AND gate with an inverter added to it. So just like up here, there's an inverter added right here. So if I put a little LED on the output of that inverter, you can see that that LED comes on. Now, if I push one button or the other button, that LED stays on because this LED stays off. But if I push both buttons, that LED goes off. So that is a NAND gate. Now, both a NOR gate and a NAND gate are unique out of, out of the six gates because they are universal gates. You can make any other logic gate out of just NAND gates or just NOR gates. It's for example, the Apollo guidance computer used nothing but NOR gates. Now, if we move down to the third row here, you can see things are getting a little more complicated. And this is our exclusive OR gate. Uh, now, to explain exactly what each one of these wires does by just pointing at it, it's going to be a little difficult. So uh, if you look at the image that, that's put onto the screen, you can see that we have uh, one input, you know, feeding the coil of one, one of these relays and we have the other input feeding the coil of the other relay. And then those normally open and normally closed contacts of each relay are connected to each other kind of in an X pattern. This is a really elegant way of creating an exclusive OR gate. And I can't take credit for it. Again, check out the, uh, the Merkia Relay Computer website. He, he came up with this really elegant way of doing it. So if we put an LED on our output right here, the way that an exclusive OR gate works is that our output will only be on if only one of the buttons are pushed. If both buttons are pushed, the output will be off. And if neither button is pushed, the output will be off. So you can see our output is, is off right now. And if I push one button, you can see it comes on. If I push the other button, you can see it comes on. But if I push both buttons, you can see the output goes off. So this is an exclusive OR gate. And then this extra little relay on the end, just like these two up here, is an inverter. So all it's doing is just inverting the output of our exclusive OR gate. So if I put a little LED on there, you can see that it is, it is on because it's the opposite of our exclusive OR gate. Then if I push one button, it turns off. If I push the other button, it turns off. But if I push both buttons, it stays on. So this is an XNOR gate.
Now this last group down here is composed of a latch and a delay. Now the way that a latch works with relays is that if we tie the normally open pin to the coil pin and then we add voltage into the common pin, whenever that relay switches to normally open, voltage will come through the common, through normally open, to the coil and the coil will stay energized. Now we can reset that by controlling what the voltage into the common pin is. So this relay is our latch and this relay is our reset. And whenever the reset uh, clicks open, it cuts off the voltage to the common pin. And that's because we have you know, voltage coming into the common of the reset, and then that voltage travels through normally closed into the common of our latch. And then when we uh, energize the reset, it clicks over to normally open, that voltage doesn't have anywhere to go, and the latch loses its voltage. So if we take a little LED here, and we hook it up to the output, and the output is essentially going to be the coil or the normally open of our latch. And then if we supply voltage into the coil or normally open, you can see that the, the light comes on, the LED comes on and stays on. Now regardless of, of what I'm doing with our input here, the LED stays on because it is latched. And then if I push this button here, which will supply voltage to our reset to uh, click it off and, and pull out the voltage that's going to the common on this one, it resets our latch. And so this is how we can store data with relays. So this is a set and this is a reset. Now over here, we have a delay. Now the way that the delay works is that we have this capacitor and this capacitor is receiving voltage through the normally closed pin of the first relay. So the voltage comes in through the normally closed into the common, powers up our uh, capacitor here. And then it comes out of the common pin of the first relay and goes to the coil of our second relay. Now this energizes the coil once this capacitor is fully charged, which takes just a fraction of a second. And then when it does that, it flips over to normally open. So if we put our output on the normally closed of this second relay and put voltage into the common, we can attach a little LED here and you can see that the LED is off. Now when I push the button, that energizes the coil and breaks the voltage flowing into this capacitor. Now the only thing holding this coil open is the energy stored in the capacitor. And because the coil requires quite a bit of energy, it'll drain that capacitor fairly quickly. Now this is a large capacitor, this is a 2200 microfarad, so the delay is quite slow and noticeable. But if I push this button, that will energize this coil and break that voltage, and the only thing holding this one open will be this capacitor. So. You notice that there was a noticeable delay between when I pushed this button and when this LED came on. Now if I let go, voltage is now flowing back into this capacitor, charges it up very quickly, and our delay is ready again. So if I push it again, you can see there's a noticeable delay there. In my binary relay calculator, you notice that whenever I push the black button, it goes Well, all that is is a string of these delays one after the other. And so that delay that you're hearing, that, that cadence that you hear as it propagates down the line is just voltage being pulled off and then the capacitor having to keep the next relay open for a little bit. So that's how the sequencer works. Now our latch here, our latch is storing data, so that is what our registers are, are working as. So we have our sequencer here and our uh, registers here. The last thing is the arithmetic unit. And interestingly enough, out of all of these logic gates up here, 
we actually have a half adder already set up. Now a half adder is just an exclusive OR gate and an AND gate with the A and B input going into both and then the output of each being our sum and our carry. So we can see here, this is our exclusive OR gate and this is our AND gate. So right now we're at zero plus zero. But if I do one plus zero, the answer is, is one. So we can see here, the answer is one. If I do zero plus one, the answer is one. But if I do one plus one, that's gonna actually circle us around, make the answer zero and make our carry one. So our carry is gonna be up here. So there's one plus zero, one plus one. So right in here is a half adder already, just out of two of the logic gates that we have right here. And then to make a full adder, all you do is just stack two half adders together. So you need two exclusive OR gates, two AND gates. And then because we're getting two separate carries coming out, we OR those carries together. So we have one OR gate. So full adder is made up of just five gates, two exclusive ORs, two ANDs, and an OR gate. So you can see that even for our quite complicated arithmetic logic unit, we have all of the ingredients right here to make it. Now it should be noted that the arithmetic logic unit that I'm using on both of my calculators is slightly different than this. And that's because there's a really elegant way to combine this AND gate into this OR gate, saving a relay. So instead of having six relays and two diodes, we end up with just four relays and two diodes. But the fundamental operation is exactly the same as this. So that is the basic logic behind how both of the calculators work.